shows you a little bit of the uh, floods that occurred here in yeah, Vermont. And we're Thanks. inside the uh, Thanks, falconry Bye. class. excited about today. That's cool. And let me see my schedule. You, I have two parties now. That's narrowed it down to two names. What was your last name? Armas. So you're here for the lesson in the walk. Mm -hmm. One. This is the um, facilities for the uh, falconry classes. And they have 13 Harris Hawks, which are the preferred bird for falconry. And um, this is Manchester, Vermont, and I guess this is the uh, facilities that uh, they use for training, so forth and so on. So it's pretty exciting. We're going to see exactly what this is all about. You can hear the uh, the hawks. They're in this little building. There's uh, supposedly 13 in there. It's kind of like a uh, open aviary in there, and they get to bounce around and walk around, but they're obviously not free. An apprentice. You build, build facilities and equipment under that sponsor, have them actually inspected by a game warden. You're issued an apprentice permit. You actually then are an apprentice for two years under that sponsor minimum. Um, they can choose to keep you back longer if they please. Um, so to go through the whole process um, is actually a seven year to go through all the grades of, of, um, up to the master class falconer level. Your arm just gets tired very quickly, so relax in. Don't worry about them being too close to you though. They're not a parrot. They're not gonna reach over and bite, I promise. <laughs> All his power is down in his feet. He doesn't think to use his beak in that way. So that the feet is really what we respect on our bird. So as we're working with them, let me do all the work with the equipment down here. Some of our birds do get a little bit nervous if some strange reaches for them. Some of the other birds may think that you're trying to actually add some food to the glove and just grab. Don't want anyone getting scratched. So feel free to fix your hair, fix your hat, point, wave, that's all fine. But just try to keep that bare hand away from the feet and the glove over here. All right? straight out here in the field between the fence posts. So I forgot, where did you say you guys were from? Jersey? These are uh, Harris Hawks. They're 15 years old and they're all bred from babies. This is a surprise for me. Yes, I had no idea. Oh, no idea until you pull it up. <laughs> No, I, I, yesterday I was looking through the brochure we're staying at the Equinox, and I was reading, I said, boy, that's pretty great. She said, yeah, she's a great one. <laughs> so the secret was out. That's kind of the position they, uh, they have when they're covering an animal that they've gotten. Yep, we'd call it mantling. In this case, he's actually just sunning himself. It's a little bit different. <laughs> um, it's hard to describe until you've seen the differences, but he's sunning himself. Billings well, just lo Billings loves to be outside, you know, yeah. especially on a cooler morning like this. He has to come out and soak up a little bit of thermal energy. Yeah. Elmer's doing the same here. Yeah. So now that we're out here with the hawks, you see they're sitting fairly still, but they're constantly scanning around. They're hunting. If they see a mouse or a rabbit, they'd like to take right off after it. But this is naturally how a hawk hunts. They still hunt. Once he's up there, he's hunting again, but he's now keeping an eye on us. So this is often... He's waiting to come back. ...when we're out hunting. Our bird chases a rabbit, he misses more often than not. He's going to pull into a tree and sit here. We need a way of getting our bird back to reposition. He's not going to just come in on his own for no reason. He's Watch actually this. giving him a proper signal. And that signal is a raised glove. I can sit here with meat in my bare hands. He's ready to take off, coming back to the glove. Now what I want you to do is take your glove and raise it at me. Here he comes. As soon as you make that right signal. 
Excuse me. Is that the coolest thing nice or gentle. what? He sees no reason to hit you hard. So as far as they're concerned, the club's just a feeding platform. <coughs> Sorry, it's not something to catch and kill, so they don't waste energy coming in fast or hitting you hard. We're going to start talking more and more. <laughs> if he saw something out there, now, he will. He'll go right for it. Yep. Um, I actually had Elmer two days ago leave this perch. We caught a mouse under that red piece of farm equipment way over there. Uh, shows you how good that eyesight is. If you had eyesight as good as him, you could read the newspaper at about 100 yards. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm just a common crow. <laughs> so he's picking up on early cues. If I step towards you oftentimes, he thinks I'm going to give you some food. But the proper cue is the raising of the glove. So if he comes early, the best thing to do is actually just ignore him. And he won't land on your head or anything. Let's go right past and sit on a different perch. So let's call him in again when you're ready. What you probably want to do is raise your arm straight out, away from your body. That way you don't end up with a wing catching you. Look for him. Get off the rope. Go find a perch. Yeah, he likes to check that ditch out. The ditch here got is all full of water, and there's frogs in there currently. And he thinks frogs are tasty little bites. <laughs> so let's what we're going to do is try to call him in again quick before he finds a frog. Well, it's fun to watch. It's a really good way to lose the bird's attention. Yes, get two cast-offs, and then it's another bird's turn. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Yep. And there's not any wind today, so we'll just cast out towards the red piece of farm equipment. So bring your arm out straight, slowly. Pause, and then just sweep forward, letting go as you push. Yeah, he, he wants to go because he figures the sooner he gets to a perch, the sooner he gets called back for some more food. <laughs> well trained. <laughs> He's got the system figured out. We're going to give him a second. You're just a little slow to come back from this perch because he's hunting now. Yeah. See all that tall grass? It holds a lot more stuff to catch, and he knows that. He's 15. He's been here a long time. <laughs> we're going to check all that out. He's looking for food. And as soon as he's going to look back and look for a cue, the raise of the glove, and here he comes. It's just like this. There he is. That way, he lands facing you. I got this here. Yeah. See how he drops his wings here? Mm -hmm. Being a little possessive. So, you don't want to reach in too quickly or too early. Okay. Just so that he doesn't. <laughs> I'm gonna pass Elmer on to you to hold for He wants to go. <coughs> you got some hungry to go on? Elmer's gonna hop on over a few times here. So, other thing with Billings here, he's gotta go through a little routine when he gets to his perch. He's gonna get there, he's gonna shake his tail a bunch of times, uh -huh. and then he's gonna rouse. He'll puff all his feathers up and put them back in place. And we generally can't call him until he's done that. Go over the bar. Like the bar. Yeah. Right there. Tail shake. <laughs> what does a tail shake mean? Um, it's just they put it. They're putting their feathers in place. It's usually when they're interested and they know they're about to fly. Anticipation. Anticipation. Yep. Yeah. Rev. There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's ready to roll. <laughs> Go so, turn wait, sideways, honey. Even between these two birds, they have a completely different flight style. He's very quick and agile. Huh. He's actually quite good at catching small birds. As good as uh, Sharpies? No, nowhere near as good as a Sharpie or Coops. I think he's going to go up to the barn for us. Wow. This could be a bad, good or a bad thing. We'll see. <laughs> Shake his tail a couple times. He's not going to rouse you during the second flight. And he'll wait till he looks at us. Go ahead and call. Great. He's on today.
will do that again. I like that flight. <laughs> It's amazing. Turn around. Get the tail shake. And try again. Here he comes. Right. The other thing with Billings here is Billings is actually trained to work with all our dogs as well. Mm -hmm. The problem we have with Billings now is that he thinks all dogs should work for him. So if we have anyone walking their dogs out in the field, Billings leaves us and starts following the random dogs around. <laughs> He's found out dogs are better than me at finding what he wants to catch. All right, go ahead and bring out the Billings on in. I'm gonna cast him off a couple more times here, then we're gonna have you cast him off. Okay. How long do they get worked uh, every day? Um, this or is a every good other session day? here. Um, but it depends what you're doing. If we're actually hunting with a bird, um, I'm going to take the bird out usually for an hour to three hours a day. And be out there actively pursuing quarry with it. Right. So this is kind of generally where we start with our birds. Go ahead and call. Just training them to come to the glove. over to a perch like that. I can really use it to direct my bird. Mm -hmm. All right, let's have you call him in, and then we're gonna have you cast him off a few times. <laughs> Don't have to worry, He's, he'll make his way around. <laughs> go ahead and make a fist here. What you wanna do is hang on to Billings' equipment. Billings tries to jump the gun. Mm -hmm. He tries to go early. We don't wanna reward him for that. So what you wanna do is turn back this way, bring your arm straight out while ho holding on, and then when you're ready, just push. As soon as he feels you make a forward motion, he's gonna leave. So with him, most important part is really just letting go. Yeah. <laughs> that's the easy spot. Yeah, that's the easy spot. <laughs> So there's a, not much, but there's a slight breeze coming this way. Oh, okay. If there was a heavy breeze coming this way, though, the birds are going to go downwind every time. So actually, about two days ago, we had sustained 15 to 20 mile an hour winds out here. He's running the glass in front of him. He's not too picky. He likes earthworms. Oh. It's a free little protein source. He'd always much rather go get food by himself than have to come to a person for it. Oh, and that's oh, a frog. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> Just gonna check to make sure it's not a big bullfrog. Caught something. Yeah. Did he catch anything? He missed it. That actually is what happened four times or not. <laughs> He's pissed. Ah, <laughs> you just figured it's better luck next time. No, <laughs> no use sulking over it. So go ahead and try to call him and we'll try to get his attention focused here. There we are. turn towards me now and raise the gloves this way. Would he come without you whistling? He will, yeah. So he's trained to the visual cue of the glove, but we try to use as clear communication as we can, so we use the whistle. And that's really nice. If we're out in the woods and he gets out of sight of us, I can whistle, he'll still come over at least looking for the glove. So we're so wow. <laughs> That's all that was. <laughs> he flew off the uh, glove and went for an earthworm. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he's looking. Have you cast them then? Hopefully, there's no more earthworms. <laughs> yeah, you just want to loosen your grip as you push. Yeah. And you'll feel it slip. He's ready, looking. looking. Before we find some more earthworms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's checking the other. <laughs> yeah, he's checking everything else up now. There he comes. I just, they, they hit with such little force. Perfect. I'm going to go check out the corner perch now. <laughs> Going. Let's 
pickup call. So he knows he's getting towards the end of his little session here. He figures, well, I'm out here. He wants to stay out. There he comes. So sort of the... It's an obsession. Yeah. You know? He's going to follow us as we go for a little walk here. And then we're going to go for a big hawk walk. And he's there. He's following us now already. And so he's perched over there. And we're going to walk along the tree line. And there he goes off again. There he is in the branch over there. So you see Elmer just follows right along, perch to perch, staying right close to us. And the reason he does that is because we're hunting the person, the falconer is the dog at first. We're the ones that jump in the brush and the briars and try to get that bird, get those rabbits to run out for my bird. Pretty quickly he learned that he wants to stay close, but also high up in the trees where he has the best chance of catching. Elmer knows better right now though that we're not actually hunting, so he's checking out, he's staying low, where he has the best chance of dropping off the perch into that cover and snagging a mouse. And it's why I have the dogs out here, he the dogs are better than us at finding, especially pheasants, so they'll follow the dogs around. Um, and we have pointers. Have you ever seen a dog point before? So when our dogs go on point, our hawks have learned that that means there's prey down there. He's going from perch to perch, following us as we go walking down the tree line here. The lure is just a pair of pheasant wings on a string. When it's swung, it triggers my bird's prey drive. So we're going to show you the difference here between the Elmer coming to the He's going to throw a bait out there and the bird's going to come. If you want. Is there any meat on that? There's a little bit, but it's more like a little fuzzy mouse for a cat. It's just he starts pluck, his instincts take over. Start telling him pluck, pull, rip, and tear, try to find what's in there. And we call this mantling what he's doing with his wings and tail, trying to hide it from us. So this is exactly what Elmer would be doing on a pheasant or a rabbit had we been out hunting. Just like if this was a real pheasant, I have to get it away from him now. I don't know about any of you, but I'm not sticking my hands in there. <laughs> if I reach in here and try to take it from him, I'm going to get a nasty set of puncture wounds. I also end up with a bird that doesn't trust me. The next time we take him out, he figures, why bother working with you? So I have to trade him for what he's got. And the way that this works is that he's all visual. He's very much attracted to movement. What I can do is take a couple tidbits. Toss in front of him. He sees that tidbit move, and he jumps for it. While his back's turned, I can snatch up whatever he's caught and stuff in my bag. Bait and switch, right? Bait, literal bait and switch. <laughs> so he may wonder where it went, but he didn't see me take it. And most importantly here, he made the choice to leave it on his own. I didn't have to force him to get off of it. So he turns back around. And I've got another tidbit waiting for him on the glove. Oh, nice. So it's really nice because um, they don't take that second when you throw the tidbit to think that what's moving um, isn't as good as what's actually in their feet. So I can get them to give up an entire rabbit, entire pheasant, just for a few treats. Wow. And that's nice because they get a reward for catching it, but he hasn't eaten so much that he's full. Put him right back in our trees, continue on hunting, and hopefully see what else we can catch. So we'll just have him follow us right back to the barn, and I'll give him the lure one more time. So that's sort of falconry in a nutshell for you folks. Um, it's still practiced all over the world. You can still go over to places like Mongolia. You can see traditional eagle falconers there. Right. They fly uh, 12 to 14 pound golden eagles off horseback. Um, and they're actually hunting fox, making a living doing it. Um, throughout the Middle East, it's still a huge part of their culture, especially in um, places like uh, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. Um, and then throughout North America... So he's Europe, just still a hanging of there in the tree, so looking for stuff. But as soon as he gets so called, he goes back to the glove. This is an incredible, beautiful thing. One with nature. Now the group has gone back to parking lot. 
It's an hour session. And you get to handle the birds and throw them out. And he, here he goes. Oh. Here, here's the uh, Now the only way he'll get rid of that uh, piece of wing that has a little meat to it, or it's called bait, is to give him a tidbit of uh, meat while he takes a, the bait away and, and that's it. These birds are unbelievably well trained. No, um, I might have to go back in, I'll leave it for now. Getting ready to go for the, uh, the walk. This is how we transport birds. We call it, refer to this as giant hood. And I'll be right back with Sky, who's one of our females. Boys in one and girls in the other. So you just gonna wait down here? Okay. You're welcome to wait in the reception too if you, if that, if you prefer that. Okay. Squirrel hunting. Um, Getting the uh, birds and the uh, you know, homing devices pretty close. And ready. Brush and briars in the woods. Because we're going to go so for a walk. Better choice. If you're flying in big open areas, falcons can generally be a better choice. Mm -hmm. They both know we're here. <laughs> they can probably tell from the pattern of the bumps in the road. They, no, they really can. As soon as we go off that uh, dirt onto the um, pavement here, you can hear them exactly. say It's the same thing when we pull up with the uh, horse trailers and they, the horses get excited as well. Yeah, they want to go. It's all just conditioned responses. Wow. Now, the red tails, how much bigger are the red tails than the Harris? And the Harris's? So male red tails are about the size of a female Harris on general. And then so then a female red tail is gonna be a third larger than that. So they're comparably about the same size. Yeah, they're I mean red tails are definitely a large hawk. These guys are what you could probably classify as medium to large. <clears throat> that is the coolest thing. And a, a male Harris is definitely a medium sized bird. They're from up here I wouldn't want to hunt a squirrel hunt squirrels with a, with a male red-tailed hawk. The squirrels can, can, give, can give a pretty nasty bite. Females do better on squirrels, and then red-tails are great squirrel hawks. They've got really big, powerful feet. Now, do they do they know that they're what they're going after, or know what not to go after? Not really. They usually have to learn through experience. Right. And Monty just flies a lot more. <laughs> So we're going to start working our way up the road here, sure. and then once we're off the road itself on the trail, we'll start working birds with the gloves. So we're walking towards this house along this road, and we have two birds out there. There's one, and it just came to the glove. Definitely want to do this. And they just basically hop from tree to tree as we're walking along the road. It's the coolest thing. both right near each other and they're very social birds and there goes the other one and they hunt in packs the Harris Hawks and that's why they're relatively used in falconry because they're more social birds
There goes the other one. Don't worry, we'll do it again. <laughs> And go ahead and just cast them back towards the trees here. Or he's really that way. He knows where we're going. Back to the path. Where did the other one go? Right here. No. Oh, there she is. Behind that tree. It's just like they follow you like dogs. <laughs> this is incredible. Look at this view. Look at this house. Look at that car. If we get both of them coming, we'll put another glove up. This is Sky. I'm going to ask her over to my glove. And here's Monty, waiting for his lure. Let's try to get him into your glove. I don't think it's going to work, but I always try at least once. <laughs> hey, Monty. Is he hard to, uh, at the end of the, day, the walk, to that's, get back? That's why I'm calling him down now, because I'm going to carry him actually the rest of the way. Go ahead, relax. He likes to stay out. Just completely relax and take a couple steps here with me. I'm going to try to make this super easy for Monty. No right branches. Up. Right up. Hey! He says, I know what you're doing. I don't want to go back. shift his weight up there and he's moving around. He's interested but he's hoping for the better deal. And I'm not going to give it to him today though. Go ahead and call. He either has to come in for this. Trying to get him to the glove. But he's not uh, that interested right now. Maybe he's had too much to, to eat. Uh, this is just Monty being Monty. He knows we're headed back to the car now. He really doesn't want to go back in. <laughs> Too nice. I'm gonna send Sky right here. <laughs> Sorry. We're just gonna walk down the lawn. Just walk away from him. Whoop. She's gonna come down and eat some acorns. Acorns? Acorns, yep. Actually, you got a hog walk this afternoon now eating acorns. Even though they don't do anything nutritionally for her, if I get a walk in the evening, She's feeling satiated, so I don't have to let her eat too many. Now, is there anything poisonous like uh, acorns or? Here in the north, none kind of our acorns would be toxic. Um, other places in the country, there are some acorns you probably wouldn't want the bird eating. But most birds aren't like sky. Sky is one of these birds that, in the wild, she would have been gone a long, long time. I'm gonna her. I'm gonna let her eat. <laughs> you see, walking way up in the tree. Yep. Got Checking this out. <laughs> there, you sure you're up? Oh. I thought. Oh, he's getting closer. Go ahead, pop it up here. There she comes. He's. I don't know. He's coming closer, but I don't think he's coming to a glove. All right. This is. <laughs> I know he's going to be an absolute twit at the car. I'm going to pull him right down now. So, lure is a very useful tool. <laughs> What's this? Hey, hey! Wow, you really don't want to do that. Guy. And that piece of wood is probably heavy enough so that it can't take, take it off.
That worked. It's like a dog with a bone.